Do you think the Afghan Taliban government will ever be recognized? Uh, reasonably, how long can we go without doing so? That's actually a very good question. I don't think it'll you, be. I don't think it'll ever be. It, 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 yeah. it went throughout the, the whole of the 90s without getting recognized. I think it only got recognized by the UAE, Saudi Arabia, and Pakistan. That's it. Nobody recognized them in the 90s from for the better part of the, of the 90s. So even now, it looks like um, they're not going to be recognized because their human rights record is not improving. In fact, it's getting worse, worse and worse. Um, so it's I don't, I don't think I don't think it's going to be recognized. Did, didn't China recognize them? Um, I think they didn't. They're working with them as as if they are the government. I don't know if they recognize. I don't think they recognize. Them. I think they're just working with them as if. So there, there's no official statement that you are the government, but we're still going to work with you as if you're the government. Let me ask. L let's have a look. How many, how many countries have their embassies in Afghanistan? Okay. No, so, I was right. I was right. It says experts believe that China, like Afghanistan's other neighbors, is carefully engaging the Taliban regime without offering its formal without offering it formal oh yeah but it's it, it's interesting yeah you're right i I, th I think i get that because there's a whole host of countries who've actually done that so these embassies in kabul still exist china okay. india indonesia iran japan japan kazakhstan kyrgyzstan pakistan qatar russia tajikistan turkey and turkmenistan but i don't think any of these countries yeah. have formally ex recognized them right isn't that amazing yeah so experts believe that China, oh, even like European Union delegation has been there, but the United yeah. States interest section, Qatar is protecting cover. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah so, so let me read this uh, sentence. Experts believe that China, like Afghanistan's other neighbors, uh, is carefully engaging the Taliban regime without offering it formal diplomatic uh, recognition. Um, mm. Interesting. What do you think, though? Do you think this is a good strategy not to recognize the Taliban? Because a lot of people will suffer in Afghanistan economically and from poverty and devastation um, if if there's no trade. Ag because if you don't recognize the Taliban as the government, you cannot have official trade ag agreements with them. And economically, that will be devastating to a lot of Afghani people. What do you think? I. It's a double-edged sword. We know what happened to... Um, uh, what what happens to the ordinary public when big powers put sanctions on them? They you know they discredit them. They uh, they don't recognize those governments as legitimate governments. We know what happened uh, in Iraq in the nineties, um, how they put those devastating sanctions. Now we're seeing the effects of that in Syria. Uh, this aid is pouring into Turkey to rescue these people, but no one is going to Syria. And uh, there, was a, there was a Twitter storm a couple of days ago that America is evil, the, these Western countries are evil because they're not letting, you know, there's uh, restrictions on flights and there's so many restrictions because they don't recognize the Assad government. Um, so as a result, who's suffering? It's the ordinary people who are suffering. So, so you can apply the same logic in Afghanistan as well. Who are suffering? It's the ordinary people who are suffering. But I've spoken to some people, for example, in Pakistan, a lot of Pakistanis who are not happy with this Islamization of Pakistan, they say that pa the international community should put pressure on Pakistan. They should put sanctions on Pakistan for not recognizing the human rights of Ahmadis and, um, and you know, uh, atheists and, and, and so many and other minorities. Um, so it is also a disservice to those people. Now, you let's bring Iran into the equation. Iran is a, almost a pariah state. You know, a lot of Western, a lot of Western countries are not really they don't have an active relationship with Iran. Now, in the wake of these protests or, or, or these revolutionary protests, what do Iranians want? Uh, especially the ones who want to overthrow the government. Those people have declared that we do not recognize this Islamic regime of Iran. So how can the rest of the world recognize that? That would be spitting in the faces of those who have died, who are dying to free themselves from the Islamic regime of Iran. So it's a double-edged sword. I get it that people are dying in Afghanistan, people are suffering, but I think it would be a disservice to those people who, um, 
yeah so i i I reckon it would be a disservice to those people who are fighting uh for their liberty they're fighting for their freedom from this uh taliban government there's a difference though the majority of the people in iran want the sanctions and that's what they're asking for the global community to do and they want to apply sanctions yes yeah so they will the iranian people welcome the sanctions right so they're like yes fight the regime i mean even if the, at the expense of their own financial you know harm they they think that they are being taken hostage by a regime and they are asking the international community to put these sanctions on them um and also poverty situation in iran is much less than afghanistan right so i mean it's horrible in iran is horrible okay but in afghanistan we're talking about life and death we're talking about families selling their children selling their girls as you know we're talking about um we're talking about starvation um and also the afghan i mean this i'm gonna I'm i'm gonna lose a lot of um popularity points by saying this but afghani people want the taliban many of them not all of them right but there's a lot more support for the taliban do we have any statistics on that though because i'm actually curious we to had, know this yeah well i mean we could look it up because i but, saw is uh, while you bring that up i i don't know if i spoke with you about this last week or no i don't i don't think i spoke with you about this but um uh, I want to share this Pew survey, survey with you guys. In 84% of Pakistanis want Sharia. Uh, now, fair enough if you want to say that they don't actually understand what Sharia is. Um, they probably you know, don't understand the full implications, whatever. But also Afghanistani, Af- Afghan, Afghan people must know what Sharia is. Because this poll um it was done in 2014 or 15 that's when the americans were still there it was the afghan government uh the, the so-called you know, afghan afghan national government democracy um, um so th- th- a lot of people would have remembered what afghanistan looked like under sharia under an islamist jihadi regime but then why were they glorifying sharia 99 percent of afghanistan back in that back in 2014 wanted sharia to be the law of the land so that's that 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 is pretty damning for those people who think that afghans probably did not want the taliban to come back so i'm I'm surprised yeah i want to see what you have so okay so apparently we got uh, i'm asking chad gbt and uh, Chad GPT is saying, I'm sorry, but it's difficult to provide specific numbers on the level of support for the Taliban in Afghanistan. Surveys and polls on this issue have produced conflicting results, and it's challenging to obtain accurate information in a country that has been plagued by conflict and, secur- and uh, insecurity for decades. Additionally, it's worth noting that support for the Taliban can be fluid and can change and can change based on events on the ground, making it difficult to measure with any degree of certainty. Okay, so apparently, because I saw a poll before, and I can't find it right now, that it showed a lot of support for the Taliban. Dropping support, but still high. So we can acknowledge that the support was dropping, though. So I, I remember that. Um, I have right. to keep looking. Okay, so, so so we don't know for sure, but then, yeah, that, that that's troubling because I I used to think that for example, when Islam is shoved down the throats of people, mm-hmm. like it happened in Iran, then people tend to go anti-status quo. But what that means is, for example, in people people in Pakistan, they're happy to remain Islamic because Islam is not really shoved down the throats to an extent that uh, it has happened in Afghanistan and Iran. Um, but Afghanistan, it did happen. So it's surprising that, uh, you know, there are still some people left uh, that glorified Afghanistan. But you've got to remember, even in the in that American era uh, from 2001 until 2021, the 2020-year 20, American era, they did not get rid of poverty. They didn't get rid of, um, you know, they didn't urbanize Afghanistan. Afghanistan is not just Kabul. So people in Kabul might not have wanted... Uh, the Taliban to make a comeback, but um, this is exactly what happened in the seventies as well. Um, when when 
the communist revolution was happening. A lot of people were happy in, the, in, in Kabul, women were wearing skirts and everything. But one of the biggest reasons that there, there was this uprising against the communists as well, um, it was the rural Afghans were not happy with this sudden modernization of Afghanistan or, or liberali liberalization of Afghanistan. I, I do agree with you that um, we can, there's only three options. When a country has violated human rights, there's only three options. Don't do anything. Go to war with it. P uh, punish it economically. Doing nothing is not a good option. And going to war with it is not a good option. So that only bring, leaves economic restrictions. However, mm. economic restrictions um, on Afghanistan is, I, I don't think, wise because... Uh, the Taliban doesn't care about the economic conditions. So the only time that I think economic uh, pressure on a country and a government uh, makes sense is that if you can see that there's a light at the end of the tunnel and that actually it could lead to change in behavior, right? But when, when, but when, did it ha when does it happen though? Because even like, for example, that's the excuse that they've used for Bashar al-Assad. That's the excuse they use for Iraq. But they, th those people never overthrew their governments. They, they it's not a, not, no, no, I said change in behavior, not necessarily overthrow. So, for example, the sanctions but that people Obama... Don't do it. But, the but for example, no, okay, sorry, go on. No, 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 the maximum pressure that Obama put on uh, Iran's government made them come sit at the table. It was... The, the whole point of... The whole reason why the JCPOA happened was because of the maximum pressure when it comes to sanctions in the Islamic Republic. But so it, it does... But it didn't stay though. Like it. it, it well, what that was Trump. That, that, was, that was. No, no. Yeah, I get that, that. was Trump. Yeah, that was yeah. Trump that threw it away. I mean, I'm not talking. I'm not saying it will solve everything. I'm just saying that it's a tool for changing behavior, and it did have an effect on the Islamic Republic, right? Um, I mean, if it doesn't, if it has no effect, then why did why even do it? Why why would we make people suffer if it has no results? You want to make sure that it has an effect. Also, there needs to be. I don't think like putting sanctions on countries that are suffering from this level of poverty makes sense. Like you have people who are already way below poverty and now you're putting something on top of it. I don't know. It's just, I don't know if it's a good idea, but maybe I'm wrong. I, I think that if the, the, the easy answer would be the easy answer to get away with this and make, make sure, make it seem like you have an, a solution without um, without all the collateral damage is to say, I want smart sanctions. I want sanctions that targets the bad people and not the good people. That's an easy, easy way to answer this and be like, oh my God, you're so smart. You're so smart. That would be great. Guys, we have the answer. Sanctions that may come up with smart sanctions, targeted sanctions that bad people get hurt and good people don't get hurt. The problem with that answer is it's so hard to do. Eco economy is so, so tricky and everything is mixed together and so many experts have tried to come up with ways to do targeted sanctions but uh, but the, you will always have collateral damage it's just that it's a matter of trying to reduce the collateral damage it's, it's almost impossible to completely get rid of the collateral damage all right but anyway yeah it's complicated if there was easy answers to these i'm sure people would just do it these are not easy these are not easy answers they're not question to have your questions answered on the next live stream become my patron today you can do so with as little as one dollar a month link in the description below